Yeah, so, so what is the best way to change that? Because a lot of the public has focused on either defund the police or training policy, but the Washington Post just came out with an article about how tough just changing a training program actually is. Because two of the four officers in the George Floyd murder that just stood by were newly out of the academy. I think they had only been on the streets for about three months. So they had gone through this reformed and revamped training process, which centered on de-escalation and uh, nonviolent approaches. But the Post was interviewing former police chiefs and police officers who recalled that once you're out of the academy, and maybe you can shed some light on this if this is true for everywhere or not, but once you're out of the academy, every rookie for the most part gets a talking to from their training officer where it's like this is what you learn in the academy and this is how it actually is on the streets and so you are more inclined as a rookie you are more inclined to go along with your training officer because if they've been on the force for 10 15 20 years odds are they've they've got experience and they've seen some things so you're likely to trust them so how how can we change our police departments to go against this this kind of power structure here where if if these rookies these three month rookies on the force can then speak out against Derek Chauvin who had been on the force for 19 years and was a training officer how do you fight against that kind of structural policy yeah and you know you you ask an interesting question and I think it's important to contextually put this up right so I was a police officer in the field uh, I was a training officer. I rolled through the ranks. I actually run LAPD training, and I did it during the time where LAPD was going through a consent decree and actually create training in response to the consent decree. And I was a strong believer that training was going to alter the culture of the LAPD, and I have moved away from that. I don't think the issue with policing is about training anymore. Not to say that training is not important, but you are not gonna shift the training of policing in America through training. And that's why I become a very strong advocate that we have to reduce the size of police departments significantly. We have to hold bad policing accountable and that sometimes is gonna require prosecutions when there is criminal behavior. We have to make sure that the laws are evolving to a place where there is a higher level of accountability for police criminal conduct. And I think we have to start creating other verticals around to handle so much other work that doesn't require a batch and a gun. So whether it's a call for mental health, right? 30% of the work of American policing in most communities involves mental health, right? And most of that does not require a batch and a gun. That requires actually a mental health expert. And having those people not work for the police department, not wear a police uniform, but work for a county health department or a city health department. Uh, start reducing consequent, you know, creating more and more criminal consequences for crimes of poverty, crimes of addiction, crimes of mental health, right? And start coming with solutions that are not criminal justice oriented to what often are social ills that are driven by poor public health, social economic issues, no housing or, you know, very insufficient housing. You know, these are all the things that I think are going to take us in a different direction. And that's why, frankly, if you recall, I was talking in my own evolution, going from being part of the system, if you will, becoming someone to talk about reform, engaging very actively in reform, to get into a place now that I think, you know, it's not about reform anymore, it's about reimagining the criminal justice system. It's about, you know, really understanding the limitations into the system, right? Uh, you know, I, I, I tell people that if you, you know, if you look at, if you were to walk into an operation room uh, for a surgical, medical surgical procedure, the, the people that are there today are going to be people that they basically build their profession on science and experimentation and research. And before they cut, cut into your brain to work in your brain, they're not trying to learn as they go, right? Uh, in criminal justice, you know, we actually, we implement very punitive policies, you know, with district attorneys at the lead of the pack without any understanding or any science behind what we do. You know, we, we 
you know, we create new enhancements. We send people to prison for longer periods of time and nobody stops and says, well, does that really work? It's actually it's evidence today that it doesn't work, right? Or we prosecute juveniles as adults without stopping and thinking that actually the science says that, you know, our brains are not fully developed until we're about 25. And as we're growing and you're testing and you're, you know, you're a risk taker by nature at that age, well, risk is going to be contextually to your environment, right? If you're surfing and you live in a surfing community, the, the way you take risk as a 19 year old is very different than if you live in the inner city where there are gangs and there are shootings and all that stuff and you have been traumatized as a young kid. But the mechanism behind the brain doing all this stuff is the same. And for us to treat that 18 or 19 or 60 or 17 year old as if he or she were an adult is contrary to science. Well, you never will see a doctor doing brain surgery trying to do what we did 100 years ago or 30 years ago or 20 years ago. But, but in the criminal justice system, we do much the same thing, right? So it's not an issue of training. It's not an issue of reform anymore. And I again, I want to underline, training is necessary. But to really make systemic changes, we're going to have to reimagine the way the system works. And we have to, we absolutely have to come to grips with the, the role that race and racism plays into the system. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.